Hello and welcome my Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your work, career, and vocation read for January and February 2021. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons. But you can call me now. Hi. <laughs> hey, my Aries. Uh, back to work on a Monday morning. I've got clients today. I'm actually now uh, teaching classes on my Facebook page, the Drawing the Circle Productions Facebook page. We're doing our first Meditate with Mal tonight. Uh, so uh, if you're interested and if you're on Facebook, you might want to follow along. Uh, and it's so great. I can get paid doing what I love. I'm really a spiritual teacher, uh, first and foremost, but I've been reading tarot since I'm 12. I'm 52. I know I don't like it. Thank you. Um, shall we get into this? What we're doing here is what's called a three level of power read, but focusing on work, career, and, vaca uh, and vacation. Oh, if only <laughs> my vocation is vacation. Well, not really. I'm a Virgo. Uh, but uh, defined the three levels of power defined by Carolyn Mace, PhD, MYSS. I adore her. She's been a long distance lifesaver, never met her, but her work has been. Um, absolutely pivotal and transformative in all areas of my life. To put it plainly, we're looking at three levels of power, like three levels of intensity. I love, she says, eau de toilette, cologne, and perfume. I have a background in aromatherapy, right? So uh, uh, perfume is the full force thing, undiluted cologne is diluted with uh, alcohol, uh, eau de toilette, uh, French for water, uh, right? Uh, diluted with water. So what we're looking at here is work, career, vocation in terms of what you do to survive, your internal passion, and uh, your spiritual calling, your work, career, your vocation. I'll explain it as we go, but there's a link in the description box uh, from Carolyn Mace, one of her videos, uh, at least an introduction to the three levels of power of which you can plug in anything, right? Uh, and even there are chakra correspondences, uh, lower three chakras, first level of power, heart, throat, third eye crown, uh, second level of power, and eighth chakra. I always love weaving in there because of her book, um, uh, 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 anatomy of the spirit <laughs> it kind of flew out of my head for a second. So uh, is that enough explanation? I, I think it is enough to say that this is a general read, right? Please take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and check your other signs. And I do these uh, two months at a time. So next month will be February, March, uh, because work, career, vocation, particularly what we've been through this past year, you know what I'm talking about, uh, has been a real transformation, but part of the spiritual path as well. It's not like your work, career, and vocation is separate from your spiritual path. So uh, all the decks that I'm reading are in the description box at the bottom. I guess that's about it. Let's just get to work, shall we? Please stay in the present mo moment. Feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath as I go. You'll hear me say breathe, right? So breathe along with me because you can't be um, cognizant, conscious of your breath without being in the present moment. So it just helps with that resonation of what uh, feels right to you, right, in what particular chakra or series they're in. Please take a nice deep breath. Because here we go. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, I need three Caroline Mace archetype cards. What are the dominant archetypes at play in the Aries Collective? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this uh, video, January, February 2020 in their work, career, vocation. Please, what is the dominant archetype? in their work, lower three chakras, what they do to survive physical world, literal level of power. What uh, is the dominant archetype at work in their career, their um, mental hunger and emotional thirst, their passion, their psychology, what it is that really feeds their soul. Second level of power, personal power, the internal world. And, uh, oh, sorry, one more. <laughs> well, it's already spaced me out. That says something first reading of the day. My pantheons, then, what is the dominant archetype at work in their vocation, their spiritual calling, their eighth chakra, right? That star, that calling, their, their, their spirit's 
uh, vocation, what they're being called for January, uh, February 2021, shall we? I love flipping these over all at once to see who we've got. And oh, okay. Uh, I get this and I see a lot of this one here. By the way, I've been doing these readings for clients. In fact, I have a reading today and I have a feeling I'm going to be doing these exact readings for a private client today. Uh, we've got the artist, the destroyer, don't freak out. And, uh, and the rescuer. Now I see the rescuer a lot in people in their vocation because that can be animal rescue, right? Uh, rescuing nature, not that it needs rescuing as much as it needs to rescue us, but you know, there you go, George Carlin. Uh, uh, let me read what's on the cards. I'll explain them as I go. And then we're going to add daughters of the moon, one each. Uh, so you'll get three, what your internal experience is, your intuitive stuff, right? What's this is like on the inside. And then we'll use Mythic Tarot to look at the external coordinates, right? Stuff that you can either keep an eye out or be aware of. So the artist archetype. Now, this means that in your work, this is a creative family archetype, that there is an artistic component here. It doesn't mean that necessarily you work as an artist, but maybe you do. This is how you pay the bills, or at least how you're trying to pay the bills. Now, to clarify how many artists, that's their career, but they have to work to make money to do something else until they move that over. Now, chances are, if you've been, <laughs> thank you, if your generation acts like I am a little bit older, a little bit younger, maybe you've been an artist for a while, right? Maybe you have really been making your living being creative, but remember, it doesn't have to be performance or visual arts. Remember, there's culinary arts, right? Even housekeeping now has become such an art form. I mean, it always has been, right? I mean, just look at Bridgerton. <laughs> Please look at Bridgerton. It was so good, Netflix show. Uh, Downton Abbey, right? You know, the, those homes are works of art. You know, granted, large-scale Britain aristocracy and, and royalty. But, you know, like my mom is an artist that way, right? It's like her house is um, a thing of beauty and organic. It's not like you can't touch, you know, stuff. It's not like living in a museum. Now with that new little kitten she's got. <laughs> so let me read this to you, the shadow attribute. Using talent as an excuse to mistreat others, posing as the starving artist to elicit pity. So if, you're, if you've ever done that, if you're doing that now, right, get that that's something in your shadow. That's a voice of the fear, the lead, the very stuff that keeps us from, um, well, attracting. I don't like using that word anymore. I'm a little burnt out on the law of attraction rhetoric. But um, lead is an insulator, gold is a conductor. So more of that magnetic draw, right? And everybody goes through it. Look, don't freak out if you identify in any of these shadow powers here, because it's the lead that we need to alchemize the gold. It's like, how do you heal unless there's an illness or a disease? Like, There's no healing without something to heal. Uh, the light attribute, expressing a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses, inspiring others to see life symbolically. I mean, my God, that's what I do as a tarot reader. I could see this as my work. This is what I do every day, whether on video or, um, you know, with a client, I do all of my stuff on video called No One's Coming in My House unless I see their medical records of, of late. Uh, uh, but it is, it's not just the art of tarot it's setting up the lights and the camera and getting myself right so that's what i mean like even if you're like well that's not what i do for a living i'm not an artist look at your creative energy in it and you might see that you are right and and that you're actually bringing something just beyond the five senses into expression in your work which is lovely that could be a teacher who's an artist as a teacher but doesn't mean they have to necessarily teach art right so the thing about archetypes is if you go in straight on literal sometimes it, it doesn't click you kind of like turn your head a little bit come in from different angles and go oh yeah so what's going on here in your because there are also three levels of intuition survival intuition creative intuition and visionary intuition so looking at now the destroyer in your uh career now it can be like you feel i mean this is a little on the nose uh literal i mean that your career has been destroyed Right. And now you're just being really creative with work. I mean, look what we've been through these past 12 months. Right. So the shadow attribute intoxication with destructive power, destroying other dream, others, dreams or potentials. Now, honestly, that's very saboteurial. And I don't I mean, Aries, look, sometimes you are not just ride or die. You're win at all costs. Right. To get ahead in your career. And come on, that's not new. <laughs> How long has that been going on? Millennia? <laughs> Millennium of thousands and thousands of years? But the light attribute, 
releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life. I could see you really channeling this destroyer energy, releasing creative blocks as an artist. Do you see what I'm saying? And regardless of the form of art, right? You know, I still dance pretty much every day. I mean, I was trained as I was professionally trained. Oh, it's musical theater. What the hell was I thinking? Oh, I'll get all three disciplines at once. Yeah, in the smallest field of occupation possible on planet Earth, right? Uh, so... You know, what does it take to really get through your creative blocks? So this definitely feels like a creative energy thing, but then we get to your vocation. And I love this card. I don't have the rescuer in my thing. I'm a healer. It's, uh, by the way, so right, this is the creative family. I believe the destroyer is either the wild card or the action family. And it's a lot of cards to remember, a lot of archetypes to remember. But the rescuer is definitely the healing family of archetypes. The shadow assumes that the rescued will reciprocate, mm -hmm. uh, keeps the rescued one needy. Now, I've known people in my life who've been, you know, worked on ambulance and EMS and, you know, they, some of them are completely volunteer, right? Uh, so that's a tricky thing. But like I said, oh my God, please, not the Sarah McLaughlin commercial. I love her. I love her music, but please don't put it with wounded puppies and kitties. It, it hits me in the heart while I'm watching TV and I'm working hard for this money. So hard for it, honey. Uh, the light attribute provides strength and support to others in crisis, acts out of love with no expectation of reward. And that truly is a spiritual uh, uh, calling there, right? Eighth chakra. So we're really looking at here somebody who really has a very strong altruistic spirit, right? That rescuer thing, that wanting to help people. However, you know, we're not talking relationship reads here, but I see that archetype pop up in all, all the time, particularly where women rescue men, <laughs> right? So really get that that is a way of healing for you. Um, by, by providing strength and support. This could parlay itself, bring this into alignment is what I mean, where you get to do all three, if not in a day, then within a season, right? If you can't align them, the, mine uh, line up. I've got the mystic, <laughs> and the teacher healer, and uh, I, I, essentially I've got the administrator, which is what I am because the president of Drawing the Circle Productions, I don't get paid for that. I, I get paid for the teaching and the creativity and, you know, all that stuff. And as a mystic, that's what keeps me moving forward on my path. So very, very interesting. Let's see what's going on on the inside, shall we? Uh, what's your internal experience of these for the two months? Please take a nice deep breath. My goddesses of fire and the sign of Aries, please. I need three cards for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign in their work career and vocation for January uh, and February 2021. Please clarify their work. Please clarify their, right, their work with the artist, their career with the destroyer archetype. It doesn't mean you're working with a destroyer type or you're destroying your career. You gotta look larger. You gotta interpret it a little differently there. Uh, and please one for their vocation to clarify the rescuer. Oh, okay, let's see. All right, all right, all right, I get it. Um, you've got two fives and temperance in the middle, so here we go. So the five of flames, Pele, the volcano, don't take the rocks. <laughs> don't do it, I've never been, and I probably will, but I won't take the rocks. I'll make sure my shoes are clearly dusted, if you know what I'm talking about. So this is absolutely about pent up creative energy right? The, the volcano. Yeah, there might be some conflict, some creative conflict inside of you. In fact, uh, um, well, but maybe that's what that destroyer archetype is, right? Releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life, cre uh, breaking through creative blocks here. But with the artist, that totally makes sense. And look, as much as I love Katrina and the waves walking on sunshine, obviously was not born from too much suffering, right? So our best music, our best art is a result of the healing of pain through creativity, right? So of course there's some conflict, there's some struggle. If you're not, if you're not having creative conflicts as an artist, you're not really growing, right? You're doing cookie cutter. And, and so I get that there might be an internal struggle. Oh, oh, this is probably for a lot of you that whatever you're doing for a living, there's this conflict because you're really an artist. But get that, 
you are preparing the way. It's going to take some time in your career, right? Okay, so removing, right, destroying your internal fears, the the, the prostituting yourself in, in terms of, I'm an artist, why am I doing this, right? That sort of thing. Well, because, um, I don't know, the past 12 months or so have just been a complete lightning bolt for everybody, pretty much in their work, career, and vocation. But you got the card of temperance here. So your experience on the inner here is patience. I will get there in the meantime. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, I am going to release what is potentially destructive within me, preparing for a new life. And I will say one of the easiest, I'm going to say easiest ways, but um, effective ways I have found of doing that is literally through my creativity as an artist, right? But you see, I can leave it on the dance floor. I can I can exorcise as I exercise. Oh, um, uh, Sweat Your Prayers, Gabrielle Roth, brilliant book. It's about the movement of prayer through dance and stuff. It's just brilliant. She's brilliant. I haven't read her books in a couple of decades. I really need to pick those up again. So there's this thing of this interior temperance and balance, right? Literally trying to take two things that should be opposites and merging them together. In this case, uh, the element of water emotion and the element of fire desire, certainly that heart third, third eye crown thing. Uh, but with that destroyer archetype on there, really burning away that which does not serve you. This is really good. This is really good. Not without its challenges, but, you know, who's not going through challenge? Well, people who aren't going through challenges, oof, I don't know how they're getting through that. Like I said, you have two fives here. The rescuer here, you have the five of pentacles, the earthquake. Now, what the volcano and the earthquake have in common in this deck, Daughters of the Moon Tarot, is that they happen fast, but they build up over a long time, right? Volcanoes you know, they're usually not an everyday thing, right? They can build up for centuries and on the outside, everything looks fine. I remember there's an artist at play here too, right? Uh, oh, my Blue Jay's back. Hey, Blue Jay. <laughs> right use of royal power. Thank you, Ted Andrews. Uh, uh, whoopsie. Uh, but with the same, with the, uh, the earthquake, right? Earthquakes take a long time for the tectonic plate pressure to build up and all at once, but they're very fast, right? Now, a, a volcano may continue to spew for days, years, who knows how long, uh, but earthquakes are really, really quick, right? A, a 10 second earthquake at a high Richter scale can really be catastrophic. Um, so what I'm getting here with this rescuer is that there is a shakeup and a change. There's a fast change. I would call this the tower card of the minor arcana, honestly, but it really has to do with your physical world. So there's something in your vocation as a rescuer here. And I'm just going with what I'm hearing here in my right ear, provide strength and support to others and act out of love with no expectation of reward. Now, reward doesn't mean you can't get paid, right? Live and let live, fairly taken, fairly give. Thank you, Doreen Valiente. Uh, so really an artist. Uh, so a, a good way to look at this is that, yes, there's a big shakeup in you spiritually and it's happening fast. This could even be a spiritual awakening that's affecting how you see what you do in the world, right? Uh, five of pentacles. Now people will say feeling left out in the cold there, but with earthquake, I don't get that. I get that there is a very fast, very uh, uh, powerful shakeup in your vocation. Now, the thing is, is your vocation has always been in you. It may morph and change over time, right? As we do. Um, my calling as a teenager is certainly not what it is now. Um, uh, so there might be a bit of a shakeup there where you can see from the penthouse, from the satellite, the eighth chakra, looking down, it's like, oh my God, this is all perfect for me. I just need to be patient and know that I am releasing what is potentially destructive within myself and within my internal systems here through being patient. Look, it's not that being impatient is wrong. It's just exhausting, right? And uh, from the Matt Kahn healing uh, mantra deck, which is not in this uh, series, uh, there's nothing to do but wait. But what do you do while you're waiting? You're an artist. You may not think of yourself as an artist. And that could be part of that shakeup, right? Look at the things that you do that allow you to what, right? Uh, express a dimension of life that is just beyond the five senses. Like what you're feeling inside of yourself, right? When I don't know how to say this, well, then bang a gong. Get it on. Bang a gong, right? Um and help others see life symbolically. And with that five of flames, there can be a lot of anger, a lot of rage in there as well. 
but certainly a fire-based conflict in terms of elements of power. What does this look like on the outside? Shall we? Mythic tarot, take a nice deep breath. <clears throat> My gods of fire and the sign of Aries, please can I have um, three cards, work, career, vocation, to clarify this artist, this destroyer, and this rescuer for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign uh, in their work, career, vocation. If you're watching this, please, please clarify one card for their work, the artist archetype with the volcano, one for their career the destroyer with the temperance card and uh, one for their vocation five of pentacles earthquake in their vocation so we've already looked at the the dominant archetypes and play really the soul powers being developed that's why your work career vocation is certainly not separate from your spiritual path right your process of awakening as a spiritual being the soul integrating the personality and the ego as you heal um but we're also looking at your internal experiences of this right so this is now the external you can say the lower three chakras of each right what does this look like on the outside maybe how you're being perceived okay well you got two more major arcana cards we'll get there but one of them's tricky well and so is your first one here is the three of swords now the three of swords here this may, yeah, be heartbreak. And if it's you're going through a heartbreak in your physical life, right? First, the first level of power, physical world, really the element of earth blending into water, right? Your physical, your emotional in terms of interaction in the world, then this is absolutely the place to channel that conflict into your work, right? Take that anger, take underneath. Anger is pain. It's just how it is. Anger is a compensation, a psychological compensation to deal with pain, hopelessness, helplessness, right? So, I mean, Abraham Hicks said it great. It's like, and I'm paraphrasing, it's like, anger is a great bridge, but you don't want to live on a bridge, right? If you have to go from depression to joy, but you, you have to pass through anger and rage, we'll go through that. Just don't burn down the house, right? <laughs> Literally, with that volcano, don't burn down the house. But I also get the feeling that this is about focus, right? To me, I will say, if you look at the Rider Waite deck, Three of Swords, the heart's not even bleeding. It's not broken. It's pierced. Get to the heart of the matter. It's an air card. This might very well be about you focusing your mind, getting to the heart of the matter of this conflict, right? And what is at the heart of this conflict? You are in that destroyer mode of releasing what is potentially destructive within you as well as within your life. But you've got the card of temperance, but on the outside, the moon, because of uncertainty, because things are occluded, because things are clouded in your career. So you might have to be working more in your work than focusing on your career, which I could see would make an artist furious. <laughs> and did you see the kitty cat just appear and disappear out of nowhere? Hey, Milky. This is my Milky or right? So patience, my darling, is not easy. But I get on the outside with the card of the moon, the best you can do is follow your creative intuition here. Let the music come through you. Right? Let the words fly out. Like I said, in terms of your creativity, anything that you can do, because you're going to have to wait on this. And it's not your fault that you have to wait. You didn't do anything wrong. That's this world right now. Everybody's on pause, except for those who aren't, right? How much change, how many, how many inflection points have we had just in the past year? Oh my God, it's like they're quadrupling by the day. How many times the quantum just goes, okay, now you're either going this way or you're going this way, everybody on planet Earth. We all have those individually, but when it's everybody, right? But here is the chariot, right? Really harnessing your light and shadow, really your motivation and your inspiration. They're not the same thing. Motivation is the stick. Inspiration is the carrot, right? So what calls you forward uh, here as the rescuer? It's really saying that there is great forward motion here for you. And even if it's not something that makes you money, being a rescuer in some way, shape or form, right? Like asking nothing in return. It's something that is going to rock your world. It's something that's going to change everything. Almost like I want to say a, a philanthropist, but if not financially with that 
five of pentacles there, then certainly with your time, with your energy, with your prayer, if you like, you can say this is your physical power, this is your mental and emotional power, and this is your spiritual power. There's totally a way to line these up, but it ends up manifesting itself as an artistic uh, development within you, a way of seeing your life either as a canvas or clay, like see it symbolically. All right, then no matter what I'm doing in the physical world, it is a channel for my repressed creative energy while my career is really, I have to be patient. I don't know what I'm doing and I'm releasing these negative, uh, destructive, I shouldn't say negative, destructive impulses within myself. Uh, while really that there's this process of healing that's going on of service that's just going to shake you up so spiritually and give you the motivation to put up with whatever you have to put up with in your physical world while you wait out what's going on in your mental, emotional world, uh, driving you forward, at least for January and February 2021. And that's what I see for you. My collective pantheons, may the Aries collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video be blessed with all that they need in their work, their career, and their vocation, that they may heal, they may grow, they may evolve, they may do what they came into this life to do on the, pers uh, the level of spirit, soul, and personality for their well-being and the well-being of all. So motivated. And so it is there. I'll give you another three levels of power. Go watch the Carolyn Mace or at least do the research. I don't know if she wrote a book about three levels of power. It's sort of an anatomy of the spirit, uh, but check it out. It's a great lens to kind of pop on and look at your life, uh, particularly if you are working with yoga or chakras or energy healing or anything like that, right? Anyway, if you liked the video, please like it. If you want more, subscribe, feel free to comment. Otherwise, wishing you the very best and the very blessed in your work, career, vocation, my Aries darling. Ah, January, February, 2021. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.